What's up, people, and welcome to the only episode ever of Four Mitchell Minutes, where I talk and you listen. It'll be the best four minutes of your life. First up, the Met Gala. If you live under a rock, that's when celebrities dress up and raise money for New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. I've never been, but then again, I don't have $35,000 to drop on a ticket, and I'm not a celebrity, although in my mom's eyes, I'm sure I am. Now there's always a theme, and this year's theme was gilded glamour. I'm sensing the organizers were all about alliteration and were blatantly blind that America's currently suffering from some not-so-glamorous inflation. Despite that, the Met earned a record $17.4 million. Now let's discuss some standout looks from the Met Gala, starting with Kim Kardashian, because she somehow continues to stay relevant. I guess you could say Kardashian thrifted her look, if you count a $4.8 million dress thrifted. The original owner of the dress was Marilyn Monroe, and Monroe wore it to sing happy birthday to JFK. Kardashian borrowed the dress from the museum and wasn't allowed to make alterations, so she lost 16 pounds in three weeks. Now, three weeks isn't a long time, but over 20 years is. That's how long it's been since Hillary Clinton last went to the Met Gala. This year, Clinton wore a dress embroidered with the names of 60 influential women in history. Everyone from Abigail Adams and Sacagawea to Harriet Tubman to Eleanor Roosevelt to Shirley Chisholm to Madeleine Albright, who we just lost. Clinton wasn't the only politician wearing a message. New York Mayor Eric Adams wore a long black tuxedo coat with the words, end gun violence. It's a nice sentiment, but according to the NYPD, there's been a 16.2% increase in shootings. So maybe strutting on red carpets isn't the best way to solve problems. And yet again, Blake Lively made the night, well, lively, with her Versace color-changing gown. It was definitely a Disney Princess Aurora moment. New York City classic architecture, I have the T-nut. This is detailing from the Empire State Building, some of the draping from the Statue of Liberty. And finally, we need to discuss one celebrity who wasn't physically there, but still made a stony impression, Rihanna herself. Yes, they literally turned her into a marble statue. From the Met Gala to another potential COVID super spreader event, let's talk about the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Yes, after two years, the political roasts are finally back, headlined by Trevor Noah. Listen to my favorite Biden roast. If you didn't come, I totally would have understood. Yeah, yeah because these people have been so hard on you, which I don't get. I really don't. You know, I think ever since you've come into office, things are really looking up. You know, gas is up, rent is up, food is up. <laughs> Not to mention COVID cases are up. The dinner resulted in a handful of attendees testing positive, including CNN, NBC, and CBS employees. Speaking of positive, I'm positive Marvel fans are going to be having a great weekend. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness just came out yesterday, so buy your tickets now. Now, on a more serious note, I have an update on the Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation case. Heard took the stand, accusing Depp of sexual assault, cocaine usage, and also forcefully searching her for cocaine. She described the abuse in detail. Listen to this. Flames me up by my neck and holds me there for a second and tells me that he, he could kill me. And that was an embarrassment. A spokesperson for Depp issued this statement after Heard gave her testimony. Ms. Heard did indeed deliver the performance of her life in her direct examination. The upcoming cross-examination for Mr. Depp's team will be most telling and will certainly highlight the many fallacies Ms. Heard has now attempted to pass off as fact. And earlier this week, comedian Dave Chappelle was attacked on stage during a performance at the Hollywood Bowl. Make some noise for hip-hop history. Authorities have confirmed the attacker was an audience member that raced onto stage with the weapon and tackled Chappelle. It is unclear if the weapon was actually used, but police confirm that Chappelle remains uninjured from the incident. In fact, he actually later continued the show and joked about the incident. Hey, if Chris Rock can do it, so can Dave Chappelle. And speaking of shocking, Post Malone announced him and his girlfriend are expecting a baby. I guess we can call him Daddy Malone now. And that's not all the Daddy Posty news. He is also set to drop his new album, 12 Carat Toothache, sometime this June. But I can't wait that long, so this weekend I'll be listening to two new albums from Bad Bunny and Jack Harlow, who could definitely put me in first class. Well, that was the one and only ever for Mitchell Minutes, where I talked and you listened.